Um, I have a video of Michael Irvin that was... Shit. Fuck. Hey. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking wind. Ow. Well, good Taco Tuesday morning, friends. Mark Holmes, of course, Joe Boo is back at the Red Brick House, but Joe Bear is up there hanging out. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. We know that today it is wheels up for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Clarence Hill is already on the plane. You know, you saw him to, uh, I think he said 28 or is it 38 Dallas Cowboys training camps as he's been to. Uh, be that as it may, Jerry Jones won't be there and tomorrow won't be the opening press conference because he's dealing with a paternity suit. And so that won't take place tomorrow. But the players... The plane does take off today. They are headed to Oxnard. First practice is scheduled for Thursday. And I don't know about you, but finally, I'm so happy that we can be talking about practice. We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player. and We, we going to be talking, talking about, about practice. practice. I mean, it, listen, we talking about practice. We talking about practice. Not, not a game. game. Not a game. Not a game. Not a game. We we'll be about talking about practice. Cowboys practice. And two weeks from today, I'll be there in my second practice of the week. We'll have the day off on Wednesday, and then we'll have the practice and scrimmage against the Rams. And that, my friends, I can't wait for. Practice on Friday. And then the, the uh, preseason game against the Rams. Uh, game time, Brian, the mailman, he's probably out already delivering the mail. Shout out to him. He wants to see real footage. He doesn't want to see me there eating the chicken wings and anything like that or hanging out in the canopy, you know, the, the platform up there with bottle service and the strippers because at $250 a day, they got to have all that. But be that as it may. I want to answer something because I was reading the, the, some of the comments this morning and somebody commented to me and they said, you know, where's the video of last week? You were saying Dak Prescott should take a, a team friendly deal. I said, let me clarify this to you. Okay. Let me clarify. I, I meant to actually have a prop this morning, but I don't have that prop. Oh, dude, hang on. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Just give me a second. Here we go. Okay. A lot of people are mad right now because uh, somebody was, uh, or Mike Fisher was talking about that Dak Prescott is looking to wait until everybody else gets their contract and sign his and, and maximize his money. And so somebody was saying that I'm bipolar because last night in my fireside chat, I was talking about people wanting to be, to make as much money as possible. I think, I, I don't know about you, you probably want to make the most amount of money on your job. You don't care how the company's doing. You, as long as my check is there and I can get as much money as possible, then boom, I'm going to do that. A lot of times they say, that the reason why people steal from their company is they feel they are undervalued, that they're not getting paid as much as they are worth. Everybody wants to maximize because you, you think, I don't know. I don't know what Elon makes you know, a, a, a second, probably makes a million dollars a second. But he doesn't sit there and say, you know what? I, I make a million dollars a second here. Uh, you know, I'm going to take less money and I'm going to drop the price of my cars by, you know, a couple thousand dollars or, or, you know, or the cost for one of my rockets or something. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He's got more money than he can ever spend. He has so much money. He bought Twitter and even though he's losing money, nobody takes money less. Now I'm going to say something here because the, the, 
knock is if Dak Prescott is being like Zeke Elliott, who wanted to get the most money, or Demarcus Lawrence, who wanted to get the most, or CeeDee Lamb, who wants to get the most money. Let's say hypothetically, Dak went to the Dallas Cowboys and said, you know what? One dollar. I'll take one dollar from you guys this year. Because I'm going to be a team guy. I'm worried about the Cowboys going bankrupt. And I will take one dollar salary. That's it. I'm good. You know, I, I, I made plenty of money from you guys already. You know, uh, we're good. So if Dak were to do that, if Dak were to play for one dollar, do you think that Stephen Jones would go out and spend $54.9999 million on free agents or make trades to help this team win a Super Bowl? Do you actually believe that? I don't. It's not in his nature. When the Dallas Cowboys were winning Super Bowls, and there was no salary cap to worry about. There was no salary cap to worry about. When Jerry brought in Deion Sanders, it pissed off Stephen Jones allegedly enough to put his hands on his father and throw him against the wall for spending that money. So... If you're in his shoes, you're in his shoes. And you know this, that they're not going to do this because it's not in their DNA. Why are you taking less money then? Because here's the bottom line. Either you're in it for the money or you're in it for winning. And I can't tell you which one the Cowboys are in for. The Cowboys have had blue chip players that have wanted to come to the Cowboys and they won't even talk to them on the phone. They've had teams that have called them about making trades for really good players. Stephen Jones isn't talking to them. So I ask you, if you're in Dak Prescott's shoes and to understand what I said was, what I said was, if I'm Dak Prescott, I'm sitting down with the Cowboys and just saying, listen, what are we doing here? Are we trying to go all in and win a Super Bowl? Or are we not? If we're all in and you're going to try and do something with the money that I don't take, that I am entitled to for what I have done. What are you going to do with it? Are, are we going to go out and make a trade to get me another running back? Are, are we going to go out here and we're going to get a defensive lineman, a defensive tackle that's going to play, you know, lights out to help us stop the run. Are, are you going to get me another weapon? Cause if you're going to do that, then yeah, I'm going to, cause I, I, I want to be about winning that Super Bowl. But if you're not going to do that, there's no reason for me to take a pay cut. And so I hope I answered that question to you. Because here's where it's interesting, too, because Jordan Love is sitting out in practice right now. Okay? He's there. He's holding in. I'm not going to take the field till I get my contract. He's holding the team hostage until he gets his deal. He's not putting the team ahead of his desire to get a contract nobody is saying anything about that nobody's saying he's greedy nobody's saying that he should take a team friendly deal they're in green bay they don't have a whole ownership group everybody owns a piece of the green bay packers nobody's saying that tua tua a guy who's had an injury history and is a good quarterback but hasn't had any more success than dak prescott they say they're not even close 
I don't hear them saying that Tua, because, you know, they're going out and getting him all kinds of weapons that, you know, getting a Tariq Hill that uh, definitely helps him. You know, they just signed Jalen Waddle. Nobody's saying, hey, you should take less money because you haven't won a Super Bowl. Or we need to sign other players. Haven't heard any of that. The only player out there, the only one, and I, I, I'll ask, I, I'll challenge you. The only one that they say should take less money is Dak Prescott. Why is that? You can look and say, Trevor Lawrence, you were the number one pick. Why didn't you take less money, buddy? You're not a top 10 quarterback. And you're now the highest paid. Nobody said he's overpaid. Nobody said he should take less money. So I'm just trying to understand how it is that one guy, that solely one guy, should be the one to fall on the sword when nobody else is. And that's the crazy thing about this whole situation. So, you know what? We're talking about millionaires and billionaires fighting out for money. And here we are. We're pissed off at each other. But I went through last night. My live stream, shout out to everybody that was here. People were like, were you drinking? No, I wasn't drinking. Wasn't drinking at all. Um, wasn't smoking anything either. Nope, nope. Wasn't hanging out with Brother Leo. Um, I was just excited and had all of this pent up off season that I just wanted to get out. And we had a lot of trolls that were in here that were just showing their ass and things. And so I got animated. But I felt like that was cathartic, and I may have mispronounced that word, but just to let all of that go, because right now, the money issues, the lack of bringing people on the, you know, on the team, the Jerry Jones paternity suit, the Stephen uh, Jones kind of bullshitting you about how you can't pay people. It, you can't pay people with the way you do it. You can't pay people with the way you do it. But there are ways to get them paid. I'm ready for the Cowboys to be the best team that they can be. I am ready to start watching some football. And that's where I'm excited as can be. Now, we do have some news that maybe is not surprising. Maybe it is to some people because we've seen all of the workout tapes, okay? We have seen Diggs, who has done everything possible to try and get back out on the field. Um, is looking like he's going to start camp on the pup list. Um, running straight in line and things like that, you know, with a bad ACL or an ACL that's recovering is one thing. But when we're start talking about planting on the turf and cutting and all the rigors of training camp and everything else, remember, he originally tore his ACL in practice that he is not quite ready to rock and roll with that. So that's where, you know, we got a little bit of bad news to start training camp, but maybe not a surprise. He probably is ahead of where they thought he would be right now, but I think that they need to actually pump the brakes a little bit and make sure he truly is 100% ready to rock and roll um, and that there is no setbacks. Because the last thing we want to do is he goes out there before he's ready and plants and all of a sudden does some more damage and then we've lost them for another season so that's where we are um with this interesting take um jordan love of course holding in tua not um close on his contract the Bengals, who franchise tag t higgins uh is now talking about waiting till next year to deal with jamar chase's deal um, so we're kind of seeing a little bit of the camps hardening on paying people. We haven't actually had another big contract in a while, not since Trevor Lawrence's. And I'm wondering, this, this is my take here. I'm wondering if the whole Sunday ticket lawsuit has got the NFL slowing down what they're doing on these big contracts. That because there is some uncertainty and the teams have to come up with somewhere in the neighborhood of about $440 million uh, 
bond per team, which probably be 10%, if that is actually having the effect of slowing down these contracts. Nobody has gotten a big contract since that was announced. Possibility. Um, I'm going to listen to this morning Chris Canty, who is a Dak Prescott hater, and them. they're talking about, of course, Jordan Love, and if Jordan Love holding in is forcing the Cowboys to try and act fast or faster on Dak so they don't have a similar situation. Friendly, seems reasonable, communicated on Saturday night that he wasn't going to be practicing until he got a new deal. What if Dak Prescott just did the same? Hey, you know what? I'm going to be here every day. I'm not trying to hurt the team in any way, shape, or form, but I am not going to practice until I get a new deal. Then what happens? We sitting in here. I, I know Jerry's busy franchise. right now. <clears throat> Check the ESPN.com headlines on that one, which is one of the most amazing <laughs> headline I've ever seen in my life. I had you to write jokes. it down. You can't tease it out there. You got to oh, say I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Cowboys presser delayed by Jones' paternity case. Wild. Uh, per ESPN.com. Wild. So wild. he may be busy. That is, a wild, that is a wild story when you read it, too. <laughs> I mean, I, it's That it's is in the my notes. wildest story when you read it. <laughs> my goodness. Anyway, uh, the point is that we talk about these quarterback contra contracts, and as soon as they get done, we do two things. We analyze it from the team's perspective and the, and the player's perspective, period, next sentence. Then we say, how does it affect everybody else? So how does Jordan Love affect everybody else, specifically Dak Prescott? Because he's got a way of going about it that Dak is not. Yeah, but I mean, if you're Dak Prescott, you know the floor is $60 million, regardless of how you play this year or what happens in the way of injury. Like, as long as it's not career ending, you know you're going to get a deal next offseason. By next offseason, that's going to pay you $60 million a year. That's the floor. Yep. But there is an opportunity to build on that. The, 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 the ceiling is yet to be determined, and that's... Mm -hmm. really going to play out in the 2024 season, depending on what Dak Prescott does, depending on how the Dallas Cowboys do in the way of team success in the postseason, that number could go higher. And so if you're Dak, it doesn't make any sense to hold out because you mm -hmm. know you're going to get your money one way or another. Yeah. The, the, the thing of it is you can get a lot more money by actually being out there on the field playing and presenting the best version of yourself. And that's why I think it's important for him to be out there. I think this is the very unique circumstance in which both the player and the team – are content going into the year, not knowing what's going to happen contractually. Mm -hmm. Usually, the players want that financial security, but in this, in the, in the in in Dak's case, like he knows he's going to get that, whether it's from the Dallas Cowboys or another suitor next offseason. So, there really is no downside to him playing out the string. If you're the Dallas Cowboys, you want to see Dak take the team further than they've gone in the past. You want to see if he can get you to the championship rounds before you pay him $60 million a year, which is fair, right? We're talking about this guy running up on double-digit seasons as a starter in the National Football League. You want to see if he can push this team further before you make yet again another financial commitment. We talked about Jerry Jones saying that he was all in on this season. Another way to frame that is Super Bowl or bust. Maybe the bust is is Jerry Jones being out on Dak Prescott and out on Mike McCarthy if this team doesn't go on a deep playoff run. Maybe it's Jerry Jones saying, <laughs> you know what? Dak Prescott is a good quarterback, but Dak Prescott can't get this team to where we want to go. And based on the resources and cap dollars we would have to allocate to him, we think it's better served pushing that into other areas of our team. And that could be a possibility. Guys. Maybe that is the mindset of Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. That's the only way to explain what has happened this offseason and why both Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott don't have any guaranteed money after this year. I could absolutely see the Cowboys having that mindset. And I could absolutely see Dak Prescott having the mindset of, okay, you don't believe in me. You've shown me this time and time again. So why would I hold in or hold out like Jordan Love is? Because that indicates that I want to be here after this year. What if Dak is done with all of this? He wants to have there one final ride with the Dallas Cowboys, to your point, get them hopefully further than he's been able to get them before, and then say, I'm sick of all the drama. I'm sick of the pressure here. I know that if I go elsewhere, there's going to be a robust market for my services, and I might be able to find myself in a better situation, both from a football perspective and from what seems to be like a stability perspective. That's what I think will happen. I've been consistent on that. I, I think this is his last year in Dallas. Mm. I think we make too big of a deal, and I understand that I just brought up the question, right? But we make too big of a deal of the Jerry side of it in terms of they haven't offered him this or that, the other thing. I don't think he wants an offer. 
I think he's probably excited about the idea of testing free agency. I think he's excited seeing the news yesterday that Jordan Love is not going to practice mm -hmm. until he gets his new contract because that quote unquote threat may up the ante a little bit for the Packers, which may up the ante for the Dolphins with Tua, mm -hmm. which all of a sudden you set all of these contracts before the season starts and Dak does not need to be great. He just needs to be good this year mm -hmm. and just needs to be healthy after week 18, which by the way, you want a preemptive storyline? How about if the Cowboys are not in the playoff race? Does he play the whole year? Does he yeah, shut he it does. down at some point for week 17? It'd be, it'd be off brand for him to shut it down. I know. But you know, you can envision that story and that conversation happening as the season progresses. Oh, Cowboys are a 500 team. They're not going to make the playoffs. They have two games left. I I'm just saying, all of I can see. You know what? It's interesting that you pose that because I can see a world where the Dallas Cowboys say, yeah, let's get a look at Trey Lance. Mm. Okay, another let's way of use, looking let's at use it. That, if we fall out of playoff contention mm. and we've got several games that yet would to be go an interesting in the regular take. season. And we let's, know he doesn't want to be here. Let's get an extended look at Trey Lance sure. so we can make an informed decision about what our future looks like. Let me see Trey Lance in our offense with C.D. Lamb. Let me see Trey Lance behind that offensive line. Let me see how the team responds to him being the guy under center. Yeah. I, I think there, there's a real world where that could potentially happen if things go off the rails for the Dallas Cowboys early on in the season. But going back to Dak Prescott, I just... I understand what both of you are saying in terms of the pressure that's in Dallas. I do think it would be less if Dak went somewhere else, meaning that in Dallas, it will be Dak's fault if the team doesn't achieve, right? Because yeah. now it's across multiple head coaches. He had yeah. it with Jason Garrett. He had it with Mike McCarthy. Both have been deemed as respectable coaches within their own right. Really, Mike McCarthy? Uh, uh, Jason if Garrett? If Dak Prescott can't figure it out, all of a sudden we start looking at the common denominator being four. And so I think if he stays in Dallas, then there will be continual pressure mounting on him because you know Mike McCarthy's out of there if they don't get to where Jerry Jones wants to go. So now all of a sudden, the the pendulum swings back onto Dak in terms of being able to get the Cowboys to the Super Bowl. If he goes somewhere else, he's a hero before he even takes a snap. He's a similar to what we saw with the Farrell Florham Park coming to the New York Jets. Yeah, it, it's it's similar to that. Like he ends up being a hero if he goes to one of these franchises that's quarterback starved, because Dak, from a brand standpoint, from a productivity standpoint, represents everything that you're looking for in a quarterback. He's not going to make any waves. He's going to be a stabilizing force. He knows exactly what to say in front of the cameras, and there are going to be a lot of franchises out there that are interested in the quarterback of that L. Just to run through a few of them. I mean, the New York Jets are probably going to be in the quarterback market. The New York Giants and are going to be in the quarterback market that offensive line. next offseason. I mean, you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're probably going to be in the quarterback market. Who the hell knows what the Tennessee Titans are doing at the quarterback spot? The Las Vegas Raiders are going to be in quarterback market. Seattle Seahawks, potentially the Carolina Panthers, the New Orleans Saints for sure. There are over a half dozen teams that are going to be looking for a quarterback and wouldn't mind throwing a bag of money at Dak Prescott. And he has an opportunity to go and be the hero at those franchises versus being demonized and villainized mm -hmm. if he stays with the Dallas Cowboys. So I think it's an interesting dynamic that you guys pose in terms of the pressure and how that can impact Dak Prescott's decision moving forward. I think this is just going to be a complete waste of a season for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, They're going to be possible. good, not good enough. Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy are going to be worthy of another year. They're not going to get another year, or they're not going to want another year. I think this season is going to be a complete in limbo, in between waste of a season. I completely agree with you, Ev. I think the Dallas Cowboys are right around a 500 team. And it's their fault, CC. It's, it's their fault, and you know why? It goes why? back to what I said about Jordan Love and how the people within the organization respond when the franchise doesn't show confidence in people that are in leadership positions, namely the head coach, and the quarterback. If you have the head coach and the quarterback, he actually not makes sense. having any certainty beyond the upcoming season, what does that say about the organization's commitment to them? And what does it say about the Dallas Cowboys if Dak Prescott walks away? Because it feels like a divorce is looming, right? Like they've gone to counseling, they just can't figure it out, a divorce is looming. But what does that say about the Cowboys if he is like, you know what, I've had enough here, I want to go elsewhere? It's a bad look, but I'm going to say this, Smalls. If the Cowboys don't trust Dak and McCarthy to give them certainty beyond the upcoming year, why the hell should anybody else in the organization there trust There you them? go. I'm going to leave it right there. He is 100% right. So, you know, I, I still have a question on 
these contracts because again we'd heard some of these things were really really close is it the direct tv thing that's getting everybody to hit the pause button on these contracts well we'll have to wait and see if anybody gets the big big bags of money here anytime soon all right good people you know how we roll we got to get up out of here <laughs> oh big run oh he fumbled oh, he fumbled oh, shit He's still oh, 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 o